glad that you joined us today. It's always a pleasure to know that you're a part of our online worship. Know that we pray for you and ask God's blessings. You were born with a purpose. God has a plan for your life. Your life has purpose and meaning, and God wants to share that with you. And today we're going to talk about the plan that God has for the church and the people who make the church up and what God would have us do to share the word of his with this world. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 12 through 23. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. So it was that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Ze Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region, the shadow of death, light has dawned. From this time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. And they were in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father, and they followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and sickness among the people. May God add his blessing to his holy word. Matthew tells us that when Jesus had heard that John the Baptist had been arrested and put in prison, he left his hometown of Nazareth and he went to Capernaum and he moved there. This fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah who centuries before had proclaimed and prophesied that the Messiah would minister in Zebulun and Naphtali. It also speaks to something that we tend to skip over when we read the Bible. Jesus went to the area that John the Baptist preached in and he began to preach there. Jesus will not leave the word untold. In this situation, John was arrested, so Jesus himself went there to preach. He will give the world his word. What we do with it is up to us. When Herod arrested John the Baptist and kept him from preaching, Jesus took the word there. And where he chooses his word to be, it will be. Matthew tells us in verse 18, Jesus began to preach, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the same message that John the Baptist was preaching. It shows us the word of God will get where it's meant to be. Galilee was a heavily populated region according to the Jewish historian Josephus. He noted that there were 204 villages in Galilee and none of them had less than 15,000 people in them, making the population of this region a little over 3 million people. Galilee was predominantly a Gentile region, but there were a lot of Jewish people that lived there. And in his hometown of Nazareth, he was not being accepted. They were rejecting his ministry, seeing him simply as the son of a carpenter. They failed to recognize that the Lord was in their presence. We live in a day when a lot of people hear the word of God. They experience his blessings. They see signs all around of his existence, but yet they fail to realize that God is in our presence. He's working in our midst because they're not looking for it. Are you looking for God? Are you looking for the things he wants to show you? It's his desire that you see them. 
It was in this area that Jesus began to call his disciple. Matthew starts by talking about him calling Andrew and his brother, Simon Peter, as well as James and John, the sons of thunder. He had met them previously, and now he comes to them and tells him to follow him. They were fishing, they were making their living, casting their nets, fishing, a pretty good profession in that day. And they were at work when Jesus called them. Charles Spurgeon noted this, they were busy in a lawful occupation when he called them to be ministers. Our Lord doesn't call idlers, but fishermen. The Lord looks for those who are working. Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He called them to greater work than what they were doing before. Most people in that day would not have thought that fishermen could become apostles, but Jesus had other plans. He has plans for your life as well, and it may surprise you what he would have you to do. Again, I quote Charles Spurgeon, it was surprising that men so handy with a net could be at much as home preaching sermons and instructing converts. One would ask, how could this be that you can make founders of churches out of the peasants of Galilee? But this should be an encouragement to us to follow Jesus for what he can make of us. These men immediately dropped their nets and they followed him. They did what disciples do they followed Jesus. Then the Samaritan woman who left her pitcher behind. There was blind Bartimaeus who left his cloak behind. And Matthew who left his tax table behind. So when Jesus calls us, sometimes we have to put down the things we think we have to have. But Jesus calls us away from those things. Calls us to something that is much better, something that will bless you even more. Have you heard the call of the Lord in your life? Could it be he is calling you to something greater than what you're doing? For most of my life, I made my living doing something besides preaching. And then in my 40s, I had the opportunity to do ministry part-time. And then three years ago, came full-time into the ministry. And I can tell you, it's been one of the greatest blessings of my life. I've been blessed by answering that call. And I would encourage you to hear what the Lord is calling you to and to follow him in what he calls and what he asks. It may not always be a career, it very rarely is. But there are things that God would have you to be about that would be a blessing to you. And you'll never know what they are until you yield yourself and give in to those and see the joy that he wants to bring in your life. See the peace that he wants to give you. There is peace and blessings for those who will trust him and he will lead you into an endeavor that will change your life if you'll follow him. We need to understand that it's not what we do here in this world because what we do here will one day leave behind. But what we do for the kingdom of God while we're here will last into eternity. Jesus said to us, do not store up treasures for yourselves on earth where moth and rust decay and thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and rust do not destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Jesus tells us that we need to serve his kingdom on this earth. And what we do here will bless us in heaven. We need to remember that heaven is forever. It is for eternity. This earth, this life, it goes by quickly. You were born with a purpose to honor and serve the Lord. Fulfilling that purpose will bring you great peace and satisfaction. When you stand before your master, you want to hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That will come from following his plan for your life in this world, not your own. It will be a blessing. 
Jesus' ministries were constantly to disciple and teach those who followed him, show them the will and the way of God. He taught them to take what he learned and to apply it, not simply to learn it or hoard it up, but to see what they could learn and see what they could share with others. We're called to show those around us the love of God and to take what we learn and continually multiply the kingdom of God. We need to lead the way in making fishers of men. We need to see that as our purpose. There's many ways that we do that. God calls us to find our part in his plan and be a part of it and then watch the blessings that he gives. I heard a story one time that is a good lesson for the church. There was a family that went camping and fishing every spring, and it was a vacation that they enjoyed. But one spring, though, the mother and the oldest son had plans and could not go on that trip. So the father said, we'll take the youngest son, and he and I will go, and I'll allow him to invite a friend. He'll enjoy the trip more if he can take a friend with him. So he invited his best friend to come along and they made plans to go and his parents agreed to let him go. And for a week ahead of time, they were just so excited about this trip. They planned to fish and enjoy being together and having a good time. But when they arrived, campground was different. Winter had showed itself again. The cold wind blew so hard that they could hardly get the camper door open to get in. And it was a cold that evening. But the father said, we're not going to be able to fish today, but that's okay. We brought along the Monopoly game, and we have several magazines, and each of us knows several jokes we can tell. We'll have a good time this evening. That night, it rained so hard that it sounded like planks were beating against the camper. And the next morning, they had trouble opening the door not because the wind was blowing, but because the door was just about frozen shut. The father said there'll be no fishing that day either. And unfortunately, it turned into a very unpleasant time. The young boy and the friend fought. They couldn't get along. The young friend he'd brought along with him complained about everything that the father suggested they do. Even the special lunch that the mother had prepared didn't make them very happy. The next day, the weather turned even colder and no one objected when dad said, we're going home. The next several years, they thought about that camping trip often and they chalked it up as a lesson learned, not about fishing, but instead about people. When those who are called to fish don't fish, they fight. The other side of that coin is this. When others who are called to fish do fish, they flourish. And that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to be fishers of men and to flourish in doing that. It's God's plan for us. It's our purpose. We need to be working, growing the kingdom of God. Our work should be adding to his numbers. There are a lot of ways we do that. Some will evangelize, some will tell others. Others will reach out in this neighborhood and help to meet the needs of our community. Some will have a heart for mission and some will sing and praise God through music. There'll be those who encourage others and folks who work in the church and take care of the physical needs of the church. There's a place for everyone And everyone needs to be fulfilling their place if they're going to see the blessings of God in their life. There's work for everyone. In my years in ministry, I often come across often older people who tell me, there's nothing I can do anymore. I just don't have a place. I said, there's always something you can do. And I want to give you the biggest job in the church. I want you to pray every day. Pray for our church. Pray for the work that we do. Pray for your minister. Pray for our boards. Pray for the people who are here doing the things that God is calling them to do. 
It's one of the most important jobs in the church, and all of us could do it. We're going to be blessed if we're found doing that job when God returns with his son. The last verse in our scripture today says that Jesus went through Galilee preaching and teaching and healing the sick and infirmed. He had good news to tell. He had hope to bring. And so do we. I pray that when the Lord returns, he finds us about that. For it will bless us as well as bless and grow his kingdom. May we be about that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you call us not to just be observers, but to be fishermen. To reach out and grow your kingdom. To reach out in whatever way we can to help share the good news of the gospel. The hope of this world that you love us, you care about us, and you're there for us. Lord, there are many different ways, many different opportunities that we can serve. So show us clearly our place, Lord. Give us strength and courage to be about your work. And let us, O Lord, see the benefits of serving you. This we ask in your precious and holy name. Amen.